So let's just say they wanted to plummet these markets 99% in a great collapse that dwarfed 1929. If you're worth 100 trillion, and by my estimates, the Rothschild dynasty is worth more than that, a 99% collapse, and by the way, they would profit from the collapse because they're in on it, in my view, but uh, 100 trillion, 99% collapse would leave them with a trillion. If you're Bezos or Gates and you're worth 100 billion, well, after the collapse, you still have a billion. Well, I don't know about you, Harley, but do the math on what you're worth. What does your life look like after a 99% collapse? I guess you'll own nothing and be happy. Well, I certainly won't be happy, uh, and I'm not going to let it happen if, if there's anything I can do about it. Now, the, the fallacy with, with that thought experiment, and you know, you're right to look at it that way, but here's the thing. They figure that whatever happens with money doesn't matter to them as long as they control governments and control the printing presses, as long as they control what people will accept as a means of exchange they can then rule the world. That's how they view it. So it's not a question of, is there money in gold or is it in uh, bonds or, you know, the the British royal family, by the way, is extremely wealthy and their money is in land and property rights, the the rights to the oil, offshore oil in uh, the United Kingdom. So some of these guys are smart enough to know you need some physical goods. That's why they're buying up land because ultimately they don't really believe that money is everything. They want us to think that money is everything. And what happens when when that's the case, what Schwab and others think is that they can give you a a basic income, give you a little bit of money and and you'll sit there and say, well, at least I've got something, but you'll have nothing. That's, That's really true because it's not money and wealth that make a person's life meaningful. It's the ability to say that I'm doing something with my life that's important for the future of mankind, the future of my children and my family, paying my debt to the past, so that when you leave this life, you know you've left something behind that made the world better. Now, if you think it's money, well, you know, look how many people scrimped and saved and built companies and made money and left it to their kids and their kids pissed it away. No, it's the ability to generate a, to create a nation, create a a nation with a mission to continue the process of improving the life for the largest number of people possible. Now, that's something that a King Charles or a Schwab or a Prince Philip would never understand. They, They consider that either idealism or some kind of religious moralism. Well, it is a religious moralism. If we don't have morality, if we don't care about other people, if we don't have love in our hearts for those who have less than we do, not that we have to give everything away, but we can help people. We can make sure there's a world that has justice in it. And they don't understand that. So their idea of happiness is you you give someone a a two-room shack somewhere and give them a, a monthly stipend, and that will make them happy. Well, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who would settle for that. But I think increasingly, we're seeing people looking at that, hearing that from Schwab and saying, that's not me. I'm not I'm not marching down that road. And and that's why we have a chance to win this fight. And Sean, it's not just in the United States. You know, in the last month, I've done uh, interviews on South African television, Pakistan television, Algerian, Brazil, Italian. And what I'm finding is people are excited about the idea that. The United States is not represented by the Bidens and and the Bushes, but there are people in the United States who are real Americans, who have the 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 spirit and the spark of the founding fathers in them. And that's what these other countries want. They want America to be America, not to be the global unipolar power. And that's why they're turning against NATO, turning against the United States. You know, I, I heard a presentation the other day where someone said it's Russian disinformation that's making people anti-American. No, it's the policies that are being implemented by the bankers in the name of America. But when people re- meet real Americans and hear this story that we're talking about right now, they're saying that's what we want. How can we be a part of that? And we're seeing that happen now. Just one final anecdote on this point. 
Blinken went to South Africa about, I think, four weeks ago to try and convince the South Africans that they have to support the sanctions against Russia. And the woman who's the foreign minister of South Africa, uh, Pander is her name, uh, she listened to Blinken's pitch. And then she said, Mr. Secretary, let me tell you something. We are a sovereign nation and you can't come here and bully us to do what you want us to do. One size doesn't fit all. And Blinken could say nothing yeah. because he's not used to getting that kind of response from people from the so-called global South. But the global South is waking up and they'll be allies for the awakening in the United States. Yeah, we talked about that the last time you were on, and I'm very, very glad, very happy to see so many people and world leaders standing up against this new world order and the Great Reset. 